Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Tuesday. So I wanted to come on here and have a discussion about some things that are going on on social media, I guess, with the hairstylist community. Now, let me say this. Um, I've seen rumblings over the years, but I never really paid it any attention because I myself, I don't go to a hairstylist. Um, I used to many years ago, but I had a bad experience and I've never gone back. Um, this was in Charlotte, North Carolina. And the hairstylist, um, I had booked the appointment. I went in for my consultation like two days in advance. Told her what I wanted. I wanted a cut, wanted some stack curls, you know, with the curling iron, wanted something cute. And so basically, I go in on that Saturday. My appointment was at noon. And when I get there, you know, she's just chilling. She's on the phone. She's walking around. She doesn't even acknowledge me, you know, once I get there. And then finally, 20 minutes into me sitting there, she's like, okay, come, come sit down. Fuck you. Fuck you and fuck you. Who's next? And so I just thought it was very weird. And just the whole time, you know, she's washing my hair. She's on the phone. Then she stops after I'm under the dryer. She stops to go next door and she's eating chicken. She just goes on her lunch break for like a good 30, 40 minutes. And my hair has been dry. You know, I didn't want to make this a whole all day affair. You know, she's making sure she eats up all her food. Then she finally gets done and she gets back to my hair literally an hour later. And she doesn't do the stat curl. She ends up putting rollers in my hair, you know, rolling my hair after she dried it, which made no sense. Basically, everything that I asked her to do in that consultation was not done. And when I left, I just I did not feel pretty. I was upset. I was crying, you know, and um, at the time I was married and my husband was like, you know, what the hell? Like. That's not even what you asked for. And I told myself never again. And that was probably about close to shit. I want to say over, over 10 years ago. Cause you figure we've been divorced and you know, the, the baby is now 16 and he's probably one or two at the time. So I haven't stepped foot in a hair salon and had a stylist do my hair since as far as like my real hair and all that stuff. After that experience, that's what kind of led me on my hair journey to learn how to take care of my own real hair, my own natural hair. And back then I was wearing perms. So I'm very shocked at what is going on in 2022 concerning the whole hairstylist community. And so what kind of prompted this video is um, I am Aloho. She had posted something on her community feed um, asking people were they willing to pay a $40 fee. And I'm like, a $40 fee for what? And so I read the thread and the lady's a stylist and she's saying, if you have a problem paying my $40 pregnancy fee, don't ask me to do your hair. Simple, 100. So somebody replies back to her, and they're like, what's a $40 pregnancy fee, if I may ask? So the stylist, Ariana Bowling, replies back, and she says, Dominique, if you want to do that's $120, you pay an extra 40 That's what it is. So Dominique says, but only if you're pregnant. Then she replies back, and she says, LOL, I'm pregnant with twins. I'm almost nine months, and I'm still working. Laughing but serious. When I have the twins, I will no longer have an extra fee. I'm big as shit and I'm still doing my shit. It's just an extra fee for me getting up, braiding, sewing, styling, all that. So then Dominique replies. She says, oh, wow, I see your point. Okay. And plus, you don't need to be working at nine months with twins, mama. But you got to get your bread and they should all understand, especially since you're pregnant. Then Ariana replies back and says, that's all it is and some. I'll still get them in because I'm understanding as fuck. So when I saw that, I was very shocked. One, at the sense of arrogance and the sense of entitlement. You know what I'm saying? If you want a service, you want me to do your hair, there's a $40 fee that was never there. I'm sorry, but your pregnancy, ma'am, is between you and the guy who knocked you up, who I'm assuming is either your husband, your boyfriend, or your baby daddy. 
that is his fee to take care of, okay? That is your child's father. I wasn't there when y'all made these twins. I sh- I wasn't joining in the action. So why am I now being charged for a pregnancy that you chose to take on? This doesn't make any sense to me. Just think about it like this. I see some people saying, well, she's a hustler. That's what's up. Imagine going to go to a fast food restaurant, right? You just want some fries. Literally, that's the only thing I order at fast food. You just want a thing of fries, just a medium fry, and maybe some barbecue sauce, right? And the lady tells you, okay, the normal price for fries is, you know, $2, right? Price of inflation. Then she tells you, well, there's a $5 fee for me to make these French fries because I'm nine months pregnant and I'm risking myself by walking across this greasy-ass floor. I could fall and slip and go into labor. So it's your job, even though you didn't knock me up, to pay a $5 fee for these French fries. Keep it real. Y'all would skirt off. I know I would. I'd be in the drive through like, ah! I would skirt off. You got me messed up. Why are we paying for people's pregnancy fees? This makes no sense. You know how many women work literally until their due date, until they go into labor? Why? Because they're trying to, you know, acquire money, save money to take care of their babies. You can't just tack on fees. I mean, that's insane. That'd be like going into, you know, J.C. Penney's or, you know, Forever 21. And because the girl is folding stuff and you ask her to help you get something off the top shelf and she goes, grabs that hook. Well, before I can grab this hook, ma'am, there's a four dollar fee because I'm pregnant. Girl, if you don't just girl, if you don't just take that damn hook and take down that shirt that's way up there like this is insane. Like where where do we stop this nonsense? So, you know, initially I was just like, OK, that's not cool. And I said, well, is this a normal thing? Are stylists doing things like this? So I go onto Shea Butter Twitter, okay, put on my walking shoes and walk over there. And I'm shocked to find out that this is not really strange and that these modern day stylists, because like I said, I ain't been a stylist since, you know, the 99s and the 2000s, okay? Cash money records taking over for the 99 and the 2000. Um, but these modern day stylists are charging all types of fees. They have all types of rules and regulations. Child, let me read to y'all one of them here. Um, this lady said this is her, you know, her beautician's uh, booking site. Just listen to this rules. $15 late fee after 15 minutes. After $25, your appointment will be canceled and your deposit will not be returned. Number two. A $41.46 non-refundable deposit goes towards your service, is required to book with us. Only 40 goes towards your appointment. You must manually cancel your appointment via the accuracy scheduling link within 48 hours in advance in order for your deposit to be used for a future appointment. If you cancel your appointment in less than 48 hours before your appointment, then you will pay a new deposit in order to book again. Three, if you book with us after 10 p.m. for a 6 a.m. appointment that same morning, we may or may not be able to start right at 6 a.m., with the latest, maybe 6.45 a.m. Four, if you are picky, have a bad attitude or bring bad stress to my business because you are not clear with what you want. We will not service you. Your deposit will be forfeited. Five, I'm like, damn, all these rules? Like, I, I thought before you would just book your appointment and come in. They wash your hair, get you conditioned. Child, she got a whole list of rules. I'm not even going to read no more. Y'all can read it yourself. But from what I'm hearing now, they're charging washing fees. Washing your hair is not a part of the service. Now, when I was growing up and we used to go to salons and stuff when I was younger, like I said, the the situation in Charlotte left a bad taste in my mouth and I haven't been to one since. When I was a teenager, you know, we go to salons. That was part of the service, especially if you're paying over $100. That was part of the whole reason why you went to a salon because they washed your hair in the little sink bowl and they gave you a little massage and it just felt good. And so now I'm hearing that stylists are charging for that. They expect you to wash your own shit at your, in your shower and come to them with a clean head, but they're still charging outrageous prices as if they washed your hair in the sink. So I found that very interesting, but there's so many threads. I'm going to read some of them to you. Um, this person says the disconnect between black women and hairstylists is beyond me. Charging me extra for the thickness of my hair, charging me for the inconvenience fee because I'm asking if I could use if I could use the hair I already have instead of just saying no. Charging late fees, but they are the ones who are late. Someone else said, man, the way these girl hairstylists be playing in y'all's face is crazy. Just adding random fees on fees. The type of hair on your head, the length. If this was a nigga, him and his barber would be throwing hands. Somebody else says, now this one went viral. Somebody else says, as a stylist, why are you charging me extra to style my hair like it's not your job? 
So a stylist responds back and says, it is literally about time. What's not clicking with y'all? One client may want curls. One may want straightening. One may prefer to wash her own hair. If I spend two hours on you, I spend three hours on the next client. Of course, the three-hour client pays more. Some, then she goes on to say, it is 2022. It's not back when you were 10. Preston Curls was $40. Get over it. Y'all want stylists to be homeless so bad. Pricing of services go up the same way the cost of living goes up. Time changes. Policy slash rules will change as well. Um, somebody else says, have y'all noticed that stylists are charging squeeze-in fees? I just seen a post that said a few spots were open, but it will be a $100 squeeze-in fee. If the spot is open, how is that a squeeze-in? I've had it up to here with stylists. So, I mean, there was just comments upon comments. And then I saw some videos as well. And this whole situation is crazy. But before I show you the video, here goes another comment. Who said ATL was the hair capital? I want to pop them in their head. I've had the worst experience here with hair I've had it, than I've had in any city I've been in. Then these stylists have attitudes, charge hella fees, be late as fuck, and have the audacity not to be skilled. Okay? So there's even detangling fees I'm hearing. Somebody else wrote this. Not my stylist charging a detangling fee for nine minutes of combing after being check notes. 40 minutes late without an apology. I hate it here, but that's okay. There's a first time for everything, and today will be my first time not tipping. Somebody else says, these stylists be having me fucked up. One of them charging a traveling fee. It varies by what borough. So this is somebody in New York. $40 for, four, $40 for Far Rockaway, and <laughs> you live in Brooklyn. Why did you need a full tank of gas knowing damn well you could probably take the train out here? Y'all, it's a lot. It's a lot going on in these hairstyling streets that I didn't know about, child. I don't went down the hairstyling rabbit hole. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys uh, two videos. One of a stylist, she's charging a parting fee, and she dares y'all to get mad at her. She says that it's a lot of work doing parting, making sure it's straight. I mean, maybe, you, you know what, let me just shut up. Y'all go ahead and watch these two videos. I'm going to come back with the rest of my The reason why parting is an additional charge. It's a process. me do a $400 face. Brow arch $10. Initial fee $120. Squeeze in fee $100. Hat fee $30. Chunky glitter $20. Weekend sword charge $50. Lace blending $15. 25mm lashes $15. Airdrop client photos optional $20. All right, so y'all just saw both of those videos. One was about the party, and the other one was a man charging $400 for a face. I mean, he squeezed in every fee, honey. That Them fees were like damn lemon juice. He was squeezing every bit of juice out that damn lemon. $10 for eyebrow arch, $15 for a blending, $10 for glitter, $100 squeeze-in fee. I mean, that was crazy, but again, she was willing to pay it. And she obviously liked how it turned out, so it is what it is. Now, as far as the parting one, that to me is a bit disgusting. You're charging somebody to part their hair. I don't know if I'm tripping, but isn't parting part of the style? If I'm coming to you for braids, that is how you braid. What you going to do, just do a crooked part if I don't pay the extra money for parting? I said, damn, bitch. What? <laughs> That doesn't make sense. That's like going to a restaurant and they're charging you extra money for the seasoning. If I order a steak, if I order some asparagus, if I order mashed potatoes, I shouldn't have to pay extra money for it to be seasoned and taste well. That is part of the damn experience. A part is part of getting braids in your hair. Like, this is insane to me. I I'm like, literally, I've been sitting here for the past hour just blown, mind just blown, because I didn't know all this was happening, because again, I don't go to the shop. I didn't know these modern day stylists were just out of control.
And now, before y'all think it's just greedy black women, you know what I'm saying, before you think it's just black stylists, you know, tripping and trying to get over and this and that, it's also happening in the white stylist community. Um, recently, a white hair stylist, she was drug all over Twitter for charging $1,900, okay, for a hairstyle. Basically, this lady is now charging by the hour. And they're saying more and more stylists are doing this where they're charging people by the hour. So she charged $1,950, almost $2,000 for a cut in color. Her name is Jasmine. And so she was facing criticism because her TikTok video went viral when she reported that she charged that client that much money. And a lot of people were saying, this is ridiculous. That's as much as a down payment on a car. That's somebody's mortgage. Why would you charge somebody that much money for a cut in color? So then she posted another video in response and was like, well, if y'all are mad at that, y'all going to be mad at this video because I charged this person $2,000 for a 13-hour process. I did not think my last post was going to make so many people mad with how much I charge, but I think this one's going to make you matter. I I did not think my last post was going to make so many people mad with how much I charge, but I think this one's going to make you matter. I charged $150 per hour, and I believe this whole transformation took... Imagine paying $2,000 or 1,500 pounds to get your hair done, and the hairdresser can't even manage to not get bleach on the entire sleeve. She claimed it was a two-day process, but to me that's very interesting because... I find it interesting that now it's taken two days to cut and color and style somebody's hair when back in the day this was literally maybe a, a six-hour job, if that. You know, when we're paying somebody by the hour, what's to say you're not taking advantage of that? Because that job should have been done within six hours, five to seven at the most. But, you know, on average, six hours. So... If you're going to take your time and milk the clock and make it a two-day event, then, of course, you're going to charge them $2,000. So I just found that really ridiculous. So people were dragging her, and it seems like a lot of stylists are taking advantage. Now, again, I also want to be fair to the stylists. I get it. Sometimes people say they're going to come. They don't come. You know, they cancel. It's an inconvenience to you all as well. You know, so I don't want to make this a video just shitting on stylists. Some of my closest friends are stylists, but... I know my friends who are stylists, they're fair. I've never heard of these. Now, I, I get like the cancellation fee, the late fee. I get that. But I've never heard any of my stylist friends talk about they charge a parting fee. They're charging pregnancy fees. They're charging $2,000 for a two-day job that, you know, that would have been done within six hours. Like I think it's starting to be a bit ridiculous. And what you don't want to happen is that you're going into this being greedy, you know, where you just want to charge as much as you can, you know what I'm saying, to try and get as much money as you can. Because what happens is that when people feel like they're being taken advantage of and they're just being seen as a commodity and not a person, you know, you're just somebody pay my bills, you're just somebody, you know, that's just here for the moment, not somebody that you really, you know, care about and you want to make them feel good and look good, they're not going to come back. The point of being a good stylist is to have repeat customers. You don't want a customer to come one time and pay $400. You want that repeat person that's going to come in once or twice a month consistently. You know, that's the type of clientele you want to build. And if you're charging fees for partying, you know, you're not going to build that strong clientele. And I don't know if it's part of this whole social media Instagram thing because I get a lot of stylist hairstyles on my feed, right? And they're always doing like Bible scriptures and quotes and, oh, they said you wouldn't be nothing. But by the name of Jesus, you're doing what God put you here to do with your style hair. Like those videos come on my feed all the time. And a lot of them, they do a really good job. But I had no idea they were charging these crazy fees and wanting all this money. And I just feel like some of these new age stylists, they're just off the chain. And, you know, you're going to push a lot of people to go back to the University of YouTube and just figure out how to do their own style. So you don't want to be too greedy and lose that clientele, especially to other people. And at the end of the day, you know, pregnancy is something temporary, you know. So 
Either you're going to work the job or you're not going to work the job. You cannot force people to pay for your pregnancy. Like, that's not their job, you know. And for all she knows, people could have been blessing her just because she is pregnant. Because I'm the type of person, I see somebody who's pregnant and they're working hard and they're about to, you know, pop, you know, any day now. If anything, I'll give them a tip. So you demanding people pay you a $40 pregnancy fee, for all you know, your clients might rock with you so hard, they might give you a $100 tip just because they know you're about to be due. Here goes some extra money for the twins. But now that you're demanding it, it's coming off as an attack and it's coming off as rude, you're going to block your blessings doing that. So I was just really turned off by that post. I didn't like that. It's nobody's job to pay for your condition, you know what I'm saying? It's just not. And in no other service industry would this be applicable. Nobody would pay a pregnant woman working at McDonald's extra money just because she's pregnant. She's choosing to go and get up every day and go do a job. Same for stylists. So I just find that very interesting that this is this woman's mentality. So, child, this whole stylist rabbit hole goes deep. So let's get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on all of this stuff. Are you a stylist? Do you charge crazy fees? Do you think that these stylists who charge these insane fees are making it bad for everybody else? Um, have you gone through this? You know, another thing I noticed was even some natural hair stylists are charging people more money. If your hair is like 4C, if it's more coarse, there's a fee for that. And it's like, this is a natural hair shop. If anything, yes, we understand that 4C hair is a lot of work, child. It does take, you know, a lot more patience and stuff like that, but... If your job is a stylist, you should be able to do any hair texture. You know what I'm saying? And it shouldn't be an extra fee because somebody's hair is more coarse or, you know, longer or thicker. I think it should be the same. But again, I'm not a stylist, so I don't necessarily want to speak for stylists. Maybe y'all can address that. But let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on these new age stylists. Are they being greedy and over the top? Or you know what? It's a hustle. And if they want to charge whatever they want to charge, they can. And it's on the clients who are willing to pay to go see them. So go ahead and leave a comment. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to share the video. Let me know your thoughts. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. Just tryna get up back and it's not a crime We gon' hit your ass up with a hit and fine It's Spirit Hairlines I'ma double book my clients, but I might not be there It could take seven hours before I feel like calling them to my chair You better come with your hair washed, you better come with it blow dry Cause if I gotta do it, I'ma charge you an extra 45 You want a towel dry? That's extra Want me to comb too? That's extra You want a chair that's comfortable and that thing we wrap around to protect you? Extra they be getting mad, but they keep coming back Cause they think they're saving money, but we get the last laugh Spirit Airlines, all them haters tryna say we nickel and we dime We just tryna get a bag and it's not a crime We gon' hit your ass up with a hit and fine It's Spirit Airlines yeah, yeah. You can't be mad, didn't you read the disclaimer on my Instagram bio? If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.